Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch with some news I know many of you have been waiting for for a long time. I know I have been. The new version of Armory 3D Game Engine is now out. Armory 0.5 has shipped. And there is a whole lot of functionality in this one. So uh, let's jump right in. Now first off, uh, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of depth about what exactly Armory is. I've covered it pretty intensively on this channel, in fact. I have a full tutorial series, so if you want to get up and running on Armory 3D, just about every single thing in this series is still valid. I've also done an introductory video kind of doing a bit of an overview of what Armory is all about. So if you want to learn more about Armory, uh, I will link that video as well as the README and the other tutorial series all down below. So don't worry about any of the links, you're covered. Uh, but basically the TLDR version of Armory 3D is it is a Blender powered, hacks powered game engine. Basically using the hacks programming language or Blender nodes, you can create games directly inside of of Blender. Basically, it is a superior replacement for the existing Blender game engine. Now, there's a little bit of opinion in that, but it's, it's the right opinion, so we'll go with it. So anyways, what is in Armory 0.5? Well, the answer is a lot. And so that explains why I've been waiting for this particular release. Now, keep in mind, this guy also had to deal with the fact that Patreon kicked his page off in a mistake, but it wasn't really a fun go for him. So I can understand a bit of a delay on Armory 4 coming about. Speaking of which, if you do want to fund him, he now has his own private funding set up. But let's get into the update. First off, you cannot update using the built-in updater. So you'll need to do a fresh install for this particular version. And I think for all the major versions, like the 0.3 to 0.4, the 0.4 to 0.5, and so on and so forth, you're probably best to start from scratch, even if the updater works. And if you're interested, there are all the various links for uploading. So... What is in this release? Oh, I should have brought a glass of water. All right, so builds are up both 2.79 and 2.8 versions of Blender, 2.8 being the experimental version as of time of this recording, are available. 2.79 is suggested, but 2.8 is the one that has the viewport player. That is, you can play your game directly inside of Blender. Uh, it now supports the Hacks 4 programming language, and this is pretty bleeding edge, so that is a pretty cool update there. There's a ton new to the release of Hacks 4, so if you're interested, click that link. Code Studio, the built-in specialized version of uh, Visual Studio Code that works with the Hacks programming language and the Caw frameworks has also been upgraded in this particular release. Uh, now supports Chrome debugging. Chrome is a uh, I don't know if it's hacks or Caw based. I think it's a hacks based virtual machine. Uh, it's probably the easiest way to run your um, code that you're developing using Armory. And the Chrome binary is now 2.8. It's kind of ironic that it came up with that number considering the Blender release version, but it's 2.8 times smaller, single executable with no external DLLs libraries. That's pretty cool. It also uses the Chakra engine. The Chakra engine is a JavaScript engine or JavaScript runtime, but as you can see, you can also use the V8 build if you wish from GitHub. V8 is another Java run, JavaScript runtime. Uh, Caw Core has a new um, windowing library system under the hood. If this whole Caw and Core thing is Greek to you, uh, these are the underlying frameworks, the cross-platform hackspace frameworks that Armory is built over top of. So a lot of new functionality to Caw and Core will then make it into Armory, obviously. Uh, so it has a new windowing system under the hood. Managing multiple windows per application is easier. Chrome window on Mac OS correctly pops up to the foreground. Character skidding CPU performance has been improved and consumes less memory. This is the image I used ultimately for the title screen for this video itself. This one's kind of cool because this is literally the cutting edge. Uh, the whole thing going on with the next generation of GPUs um, is that there is ray tracing support, real-time ray tracing. So theoretically, you can use ray tracing in your game. In reality, the hardware just isn't there yet, so your performance is going to suck. But if you're developing for the future or you're developing for the new 2080 cards that have just been released, this might be a place to go. And the fact that cost supports ray traced API is just staggeringly impressive, to be honest. Uh, right now, it's for Direct3D 12 only, but Vulkan support is being added. Hybrid ray trace running your path is also in the works for Armory. Uh, you can see some presentations on ray tracing. Tons of uh, improvements pushed to our Direct 3D 12 Vulkan and Metal back end. Shader compilation is now more robust. Uh, you know, frankly, Armory and Ka have more back ends than you, you know what to do with. You can even run this code on a toaster, I think. Uh, more progress on the Graphics 5 API and Ka. This API is designed to take full advantage of the Vulkan and Direct 3D 12 Metal APIs. Those are all actually lower level APIs. They're kind of getting closer to the hardware and they seem to be the future of graphics. Uh, small 
call examples on the Graphics 5 API now available and the ray tracing examples. So if you want to actually get into that stuff, there are a couple of examples to learn from. Core, the low-level library powering Armory, is now moving to C. Uh, then it doesn't really affect you, to be honest. Idle CPU usage has been minimized on Windows. More gamepad fixes, fixed macOS support, fixed mouse lock, and mouse hide on Linux. Chrome will now exit gracefully on Linux. Updated hash link support now with Android link. Trace has been improved. Now, this sounds like a little one, but this is really irritating, especially if you're a Windows developer. And this is one of the areas where my existing tutorials have been outdated and in a good way. Trace functionality sucked before, especially if you're a Windows developer. Now you can actually print out the screen. And this is really important because if you want to just do some quickie debug work, this is the equivalent of print or print line in many other programming languages. So if you just need to do some quick and dirty debugging out to the console, hey, you finally can now. And in the past, it wouldn't actually print to the Blender window console, which was very infuriating. It would on Mac and other platforms, but not on Windows. So that's a big change there. Armory has been optimized to output smaller builds. Uh, dead code elimination is now more effective. Minimal HTML5 project is now 290 kilobytes. Uh, build system has been improved now with multi-threaded shader and asset compilation. Depending on the number of processor cores, build time should be significantly faster. Use Armory add-on preferences, call make threads to configure the number of threads. That's cool. So the build system is now multi-threaded and should be faster. Drawing order can now be set in armor rendery path panel using the draw order property. Uh, blending modes can be manually set for material now. Armory SDK size has been further reduced, so the Windows Zip went from 272 megabytes to 232 megabytes, and the uh, 7Z or um, 7 zip version uh, archive is now down to 144 megabytes. Do be warned though, that one takes forever to extract. So if you've got the uh, if you've got the bandwidth to download it, get the bigger one. Uh, more Bone Child fixes have been pushed. Bone Child examples have been restored. Top-down template has been added. Uh, new twin stick shooter template has been added. Armory has a new web page. That's cool. Uh, video tutorials, including mine, are now there on that link. Uh, new Armory Discord server has been opened up. Uh, roadmap page has been created, so you know it is coming soon in the world of Armory. Um, up most upvoted feature requests, uh, download page now has more demos available. New Armor Paint has been released, Armor Paint 0.4. Now Armor Paint is a PBR-based painting package for creating uh, realistic textures. It's built on top of Armory. Uh, I also did a video on it if you're interested in learning more. I'll, I'll toss that link down below as well. Uh, material nodes can now be controlled with logic nodes or scripting. Added a new example to cover that. Logic nodes can now be linked uh, linked. Uh, by sharing, I'm assuming. Uh, the same ID, added a new example, added a new split screen example. Uh, logic node variables can now be monitored in the bug console. Speaking of split screen, I think I actually covered this in one of my tutorials, if you're curious. Uh, add bone FK and bone IK logic nodes to perform forward and inverse kinematics. <sighs> Added pause trait and resume trait logic nodes. Animation blending can be manually controlled now. Added new blend action node. Uh, added a new example showing how to match sun direction with Hossic Wiki Sky. Okay. Uh, logic nodes can now be can now control custom shaders. Updated the example. More progress on configuring graphic settings at runtime. Uh, instance children feature now support rotation and scale. Uh, added a new example using rigid body collision groups. UI editor has been updated with support for more elements. That's kind of cool. Uh, updated UI canvas example with new elements. Updated hacks UI example. Setup guide has been updated. Troubleshooting section uh, added a resource page uh, integrating Armory into JavaScript environments. Added a resource page integrating Armory into C++ environments. The material doc has been updated with blending and material params. Particle setup is simplified. No longer need to set material flag. Add a new doc and work on transforms. Add a new doc page with optimization tips. Add a new doc describing Chrome features. Add a new doc with contribution guides. <sighs> Uh, more updates to the manual. Curious about update project history. Here is a history of what happened in the past. Uh, updated HTML5 docs with embedded guide. Updated Armory API docs. Uh, added a new Chrome export video. Uh, memory leaks in the bullet integration have been fixed. Uh, mesh collision shape is now supported. Updated Oh My Physics Engine integration. Oh My Lightweight Engine written in hacks now with convex hull support. Logic Pack has been refactored and has proper code structure now. Apps App template project has been updated. A simple starting point for building apps. <sighs> Started a simple project which aims to document Armory integration into your own existing software work in progress. Self-contained Armory Mesh Exporter has been updated, useful when using Iron Library. Particle systems are now properly cleaned up on removal. Oh, coincidentally, Armory Library can be thought of as the glue between Blender and uh, 
Kaw, I guess, or Blunder and Armory itself. This is what kind of does the, the bridge between the world of Blunder and the world of the Armory game engine. Particle systems now properly clean up on removal, improved folder structure for published games. All data is now placed in a single folder. More fixes to batch meshing, level of detail features, uh, initial support for handling big world coordinates uh, currently behind the arm center world flag will be enabled by default in the future. Bezier interpolation for op uh Object actions that have been implemented has been implemented. Iron has more code docs now. Math module has been reworked for more performance. Improved CPU performance when performing draw dispatch in the render path. When switching scenes, voxel volume is now properly updated. Improved performance for C++ targets. Unwrap type can now be set in Armory Bake tool. Uh, warning was shown on wrong logic uh, on wrong logic node connection. Warning will be shown on missing UV core texture. Uh, warning will be shown when trait script is not found. Save on build option is off by default now. Bundle and icon can now be specified in Armory Exporter. Logic nodes will no longer throw exception when pull it, when receiving null input. Look at node has been added. That's nice. Everyone's been implementing that themselves, and that, that's a nice one to add on there. Uh, degrees to radians and radian degrees logic nodes have been added. Uh, new debug console contains a log viewer, scripting, render path, inspector, profiler, and resource watcher. All this stuff. Uh, added a new array slice and array splice node. Added a new constrained string node. Git child node allows to specify object name type search type. Ugh. All right, we're getting to the bottom. Thankfully, uh, pausing, resetting world physics is fixed. More fixes on mobile browser. Removing item in Armory LOD panel also removes a generated LOD mesh now. Fixes to mapping hue, saturation, UV map material nodes. More, but all right, we're getting into pretty small fixes at this point in time, so we'll just skip over all that stuff. And uh, a new uh, logic node uh, tutorial, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. And then they've got what is coming soon. Armory marks a giant step forward. The focus of point six will be fixing graphics features and uh, adding new ones like light probe support and improving graphics performance. We are also close to run Chrome on Android, which will let us run Android projects on Android straight from Blender in a matter of seconds. And of course, more bug fixes. A pretty awesome release overall, I have to say. There is a lot there. Again, if you missed it, if you did not like me reading it to you, I will, of course, toss this entire thing in the links down below. Um, yeah, and here you can see this is ultimately where the uh, future roadmap is. So if you want to see, I'm assuming it's going to get a little bit more detail as it is flushed out. But there is now a roadmap of what is coming in upcoming versions of Armory. And you can see there is a list here for 0.6 and then uh, 0.7 is really empty. So I imagine this will be flushed out over time as new features are finalized for the next release coming up. So, pretty impressive stuff there. There is quite a bit in Armory 0.5. I would argue that it is definitely worth the wait. Not a whole lot of completely new functionality added, so I think my tutorial series is still pretty comprehensive at this point. Uh, there's a new look node, so you can replace the uh, third-party controller I used for that in the past. And Trace finally works. I think I had to do a uh, terminal window workaround on that, so you had the debug console up to get Trace working, and I think I noted that in my tutorials. Fortunately, that is no longer the case. So uh, all of my tutorials will still help you get up and running with Armory 3D 0.5, but it just looks like it now has more functionality, better performance, smaller run times, and less bugs. So really can't fault a release like that. Armory 3D 0.5. Have you checked out Armory yet? If not, go do so. Completely free, completely open source, and completely awesome. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.